Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at a summing amplifier with the non-inverting operational mode. Notice to do that, we have reversed the input signals right here. We made that the plus and that the minus. Again, this means non-inverting, this means inverting. So the input signals are connected to the non-inverting terminal of the operational amplifier. What we're trying to do here is find the output voltage in terms of the three input voltages. Hmm. We have two connections here. We have a connection at A, we have a connection at B. We have current running from the output to B through the feedback resistor, and then we have the current running from B to ground. So let's go ahead and work off at the junction B first. What we can say here is that the sum of the currents entering junction B must equal the sum of the currents leaving junction B, which means that the currents entering, I sub F, plus zero, zero being the current coming from here, because remember that we said that for an ideal amplifier that the current here is nearly zero, and that must equal the current leaving the junction, which is I sub F. Assuming that the potential here is higher than it is here, we can then say that V at O minus V at B divided by the resistance R sub F, that would be current I sub F, is equal to I sub, I sub F which would be equal to, oh, wait a minute, I can't have two I sub Fs, this should be I sub I. Sorry about that, there we go. And I sub I would be equal to the voltage difference here, which is equal to V sub B um, minus zero, because that would be ground, divided by the current here, divided by the resistance, which is R sub I. Which means we can write V sub O in terms of the following. We can say that V sub O, is equal to V sub B, well I can cross multiply this first, so we get R sub F divided by R sub I, that would be the gain factor, times V sub B, and then we move this minus V sub B over to here, we get plus V sub B right here, which means that I can then write this equation as the output voltage V sub O is equal to, that would be R sub F divided by R sub I plus 1 times V sub E. And of course this quantity right here would be considered the gain of the amplifier. Now we're going to take a look at terminal A right here. And again what we can say is that all the currents entering A must equal all the currents leaving A, which means that I1 plus I2 plus I3 must equal the currents leaving that, which is zero. Again we can assume that the current entering this terminal right here would be nearly zero. That would be I sub 1. And I sub 1 can be found as uh, when we say that V sub A, that would be V sub A minus V sub 1, assuming, well, no, we're going to assume that this is a higher potential than this, so we're going to write it as V sub 1 minus V sub A divided by the resistance R sub 1 plus V sub 2 minus V sub A divided by resistance 2 plus V sub 3 minus V sub A divided by resistance 3 is equal to 0. Okay, now somehow we have to connect these two equations right here. How can we do that? Oh, remember again that the voltage between A and B should be nearly zero. I should say the voltage difference between the two, which means that V sub A is very nearly equal to V sub B. That means I can replace all the V sub A's here by V sub B and then make a connection here to V sub B. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve that for V sub A and then replace V sub A with V sub B. How can I do that? I can do that as follows. I can say that V sub 1 over R1 minus V sub A over R1 plus V sub 2 over R2 minus V sub A over R2 plus V sub 3 over R3 minus V sub A over R3 is equal to zero. Then I can move all the V sub A's over to the other side and factor out a V sub A, and of course then that becomes positive, which means that V sub 1 over R1 plus V sub 2 over R2 plus V sub 3 over R3, that combined, is equal to, when I factor out a V sub A, times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Notice that looks like, hmm, that looks like summing up 
resistances in parallel, and that's exactly what we have here. So we can replace that by 1 over our total. 1 over our total is equal to this. So what we can say is that V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2 plus V3 over R3 can be written as V sub A times 1 over R total, because 1 over R total for resistors in parallel are 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Finally, what I can do is I can then solve this for V sub A by moving R total up here. So we can say that V sub A is equal to R total times V sub 1 over R1 plus V sub 2 over R2 plus V sub 3 over R3. And then realizing that V sub A is approximately equal to V sub B, I can then plug that in here. And finally, I have the voltage of the output, V sub O, is equal to the gain, which is RF over R sub I plus 1 times V sub B, which is R total, times the input voltages V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2 plus V3 over R3. And that would then be the output voltage relative to the three input voltages and multiply times the gain. And that's how we find the output voltage with a summing amplifier when we have the inputs connected to the non-inverting terminal of the amplifier. And that's how it's done.